Okay, today we're talking support requests in Office 365. How do you create a great experience for your end users to get support from you or your IT team or whoever basically needs to provide support for those users? A lot of this comes from personal experience because we've been through a situation where we were monitoring a support email inbox where anyone could send any kind of question or needs that they had into the support inbox. And it was a shared mailbox, so anyone had access to it on our team, but it was really hard to be accountable for those things going on and know who was managing what thing and especially things would, would get lost or you'd flag them and, and over time those flagged emails would just build up and you would never kind of dig out of that hole. So in our situation, we wanted to build something a little bit better than the help desk power app that we've talked about. We had a, a, a custom process that we wanted to walk people through and a couple different avenues that we could give them. And we wanted to accomplish this with Office 365. So we're gonna talk through if you want to build your own support intake model at your organization, a couple different things that you can think about in, in building that process. And so the first thing we're gonna talk about is the intake method. So what different tools are available to users who need to request support, what questions that we want to ask them and some guidance there. And then lastly, where do we want this to end up? Where do we want it to be managed so that we can make sure it gets assigned to someone for the due date, we can be accountable. Before we dig in, uh, I wanna pump the brakes a tiny bit and say, sometimes there are help desk tools out there that work well for this already. You can think about tools like Zendesk or OneDesk that manage a lot of this process for you. In our case, those options weren't really uh, available to us and we wanted to build something ourselves. So definitely, Feel out those options first if you want something a little bit more structured. But if if you're if you're willing to build something and want kind of a custom process that you want to be able to build on over time, this is going to be a good one for you. Okay, so the first thing we want to tackle is the entry point to our support process. There's a few different tools within Office 365 that can get the job done. So we wanna walk through a couple of the options and help you decide which one might be the best choice for users to actually be entering in their support request. The first option is Microsoft Forms. Forms is super simple. It's really easy to set up all your forms. You get to decide if you want uh, text inputs, choice inputs. There's even a couple special like Likerts or uh, different arrays of options that you can set up in your forms. Forms is great if you don't really care to have much of a custom process and you're okay with them just filling out a form. And you can change like the, the background image and the, the colors there, but you can't necessarily theme it entirely your way. You're a little bit stuck with how Microsoft Forms looks. So something to consider there. Another thing Forms works well for is if you want external users to be able to submit to your support intake. So we do this, for example, if we have an app deployed and some of our clients want to log a bug or maybe a feature request, they have a link that they can go to and fill out the details about what's going on and that enters into our system. So choose forms if you want something that's simple, maybe if you want external users to have access to it, and if you don't really need too complex of branching or processing behind the form. The next option for intake is Power Apps. Power Apps is a little bit of a medium effort solution for this. Uh, it's great if you want like a stepped process or kind of custom look and feel to your form. Uh, we used it in this instance because we wanted to have three different avenues that a user could go down. And we wanted to be intentional about upfront, showing those options and having clear directions based on which one they chose. A couple things you should know before choosing Power Apps is it requires an authenticated user in your tenant. Uh, it might require extra licensing and it's a little bit more difficult to set up than a form. It's definitely not click here to add a button. It takes a little bit more configuration. So choose Power Apps if you want something that is a little bit more complex than forms and you can get more of a custom experience, but you don't need external users to be submitting to your form. The third option for intake is a Teams bot. So Microsoft has been building a framework that you can essentially build a conversational bot 
really easily and you can do it without getting your hands into the code behind everything. You should really consider a Teams bot if you want it to feel conversational for your users and there might be um, a lot of different ways for a user to go and you want to be dependent on what they actually type in or ask you and it's less of a linear question answer process. After you get it set up, it's essentially your job to train the bot. You can take all the inputs that people type in and you can kind of steer the bot and say, hey, when this person said this, this is what they really meant. And over time, it learns through artificial intelligence and basically picks that option better next time. So use a Teams bot when you want a conversational process and when the process itself might include a lot of forks in the road that you want to feel kind of like a natural process for the user. Okay, now that we've chosen a tool, we want to basically establish what questions do we want to ask? What, what do we need from the user in order to support them and fix whatever issue that they're having? So in this case, like I said, for this client, we built three different ways that they could go. And the first one is Yammer. If, if it's kind of a general question about a topic that we support, we don't necessarily want to answer every little question that comes in that someone else might be able to help support. And so we said, hey, go Go to the community on Yammer, it's, it's active. People are answering things all the time. You might actually find an existing answer through search out there. The second one was, I'm having an emergency. There's an outage or something big is going on. Our tool was not for that. Our support team was not for that. We wanted to, to steer them towards the formal uh, IT support help desk that uh, handles kind of the emergency situations. And then the third one was kind of in between, something that they were, they need hands-on help with. It's not super time sensitive, but they like to get it done and they want to have someone reach out to them and help them accomplish whatever they're having an issue with. So that led them down the path of filling out a few forms that um, in turn ended up on our task board, which I'll get to in a second. So a couple questions that we like to ask in support forms that you might find helpful are things like, what were you doing? What did you expect to happen versus what actually happened? It's important to draw that distinction sometimes because sometimes if you just give them a free text field, it's super unclear as to what they actually wanted to happen. So we wanted to, to ask that. And then what tool are you using? So in our case, we support multiple different tools like SharePoint, OneDrive, Power Apps, Power Automate. And we wanted to categorize all the things that came in, so we gave them an option there. Uh, and then lastly, what's the urgency on this? So common uh, options there are blocking, like it's actually preventing me from getting my job done and I need someone to, to jump on it. It's not emergency, like I said before, but it's like, hey, I, I, it's, it's important to get on this. So the second one is bug. So something is wrong, it's not necessarily blocking me, but uh, it would be great to get it fixed. And then the third one is a feature request. So this is when someone encounters a situation where they wish something was different. Uh, it's not broken, but it'd be great if it was on someone's list to implement something like this and uh, have it in a black backlog that we can prioritize and, and try to check off. Okay, so we've talked about a couple different intake options. We've talked about the questions that we might want to ask in the process. Now, the third thing to establish is where do we want this information to go, right? Where is it going to go that it's actionable by someone, it gets assigned, it'll get done, and we can be accountable to these support requests coming in. If your team's already using a tool to track tasks, uh, consider using Power Automate to plug it into there. Sometimes it matters to keep support request tasks separate from your, your daily work tasks, but sometimes they all fit together and it's all part of your job. And so it makes sense to plug them in there and then it gives you one place to actually go and, and check off your tasks. So consider that. A couple different options within Office 365. If you don't have one set up yet, Planner. We have videos all about Planner and task management and that that you should check out. We'll put it in the card right up here. Planner is a great place to put these things if you really just need a simple board and track due dates, who it's assigned to, and keep track of its life cycle. Another option is Microsoft Project, which we have some content in the hopper for MS Project. It's not out there yet, but 
Uh, if we do, we'll, we'll put it right up here, depending on when you're watching this video. Project's definitely a, a bigger tool than Planner. It's meant to track something with a little bit longer life cycle and uh, develop a customized process to manage your, your project and be able to see a timeline from start to finish and uh, something that's definitely a little bit heavier. And uh, with that, it, it costs extra. It doesn't come with your Office 365 subscription, but it does integrate well. Lastly, the one that we actually used in this case was uh, Azure DevOps. It's traditionally used when you have a code base that you want to manage and, and keep track of and tie tasks according to certain changes that happen within your code. But outside of that, it actually has a great task management tool, which uh, it's similar to project where you have epics and features and, and user stories, and you can customize the process and really group things together in a way that works well for you and, and manage that backlog of maybe new features that people logged. And it worked well for us because we already used it. So we use Power Automate to plug in our tasks there. Connecting it all together. So we have intake, we have the questions we wanna ask, we know where we want to go, so Power Automate can help us connect those dots. Uh, if you are just starting with Power Automate, I actually did a video not too long ago about intro to Power Automate, and it walks through a very similar process of, of getting something from a form into a task board. So you should definitely check that out. So that's if you're using like the forms and, and planner options that we've been talking about. If you want to use Power Apps to, as your form input, uh, we've got tons of videos on that as well. We'll put it in the card up here, but Mike actually just uh, not too long ago came out with a video on connecting Power Apps to Power Automate and uh, walked through the entire process there. So it's not worth me getting into it, but uh, we'll, we'll make sure all these links are in the description below if you wanna learn more. So at a really high level, it's Power Automate's job to take the form submission and all the details within that and relay it into whatever tool that is gonna keep track of the outstanding task and make sure that things are getting done and uh, nothing gets lost along the way. Okay, so that's a little bit of a broad view on building a support intake tool in Office 365. I know we didn't get too deep into any of these avenues, but I wanted to provide kind of some, some options, some, some thoughts that you can use to build your own custom process and if there's any aspects of it that you want to know more about or have questions about, feel free to leave a comment below. We found that building this process of, uh, for us, it was a power app and using Power Automate, connecting it to DevOps, tracking the tool and, and adding some of the email smarts around completing and, and getting the assigned. It's worked great for us and really relieved this mental load of having to not monitor a uh, email inbox and try to keep track of all the tasks there. It just did not work. So we've been really happy with it. Uh, totally interested in your thoughts. And please, if you want to see more content like this, subscribe down below. So thanks again for watching and we'll see you next time.